Greetings from Costa Rica. I hope you're doing well. My name is Matt Rosenstiel. Today, my topic is trees. Owning a home in Guanacaste, Costa Rica is an amazing experience. And one reason is that you have the opportunity to plant trees that will grow extremely fast here in the tropics. Today, I'm gonna to give an overview of a number of tree species that you can plant as a homeowner here in Costa Rica that provide everything from shade to fruits to nuts. Stay tuned. You would be amazed at how quickly you can have shade or fruit trees that are accomplishing their purpose on a much shorter timeline than what you would see in colder climates in the US or Canada. Let's take the first example in about a dozen species that I wanna talk about today. Behind me is an Almendro de Playa. I'm looking almost directly down at this, at the camera right now. The tree is now up above our house and it provides amazing shade from which I'm recording right now. We only have to give it a little bit of water to keep it green during the entire summer. And as it matures, it's a tree that provides absolutely incredible umbrella-like shade that really can cool down an area around your house. We have a little patio out here and you wouldn't believe the difference between having this tree and not in terms of temperature, especially in the dry season here in Guanacaste. Let's go on to another tree. Back behind me, this gigantic tree with bronze leaves is another one that not many people would recognize. It's a native species fruit-bearing tree called a caimito, which honestly I don't even know what to call in English, but from what, what you can see, uh, the caimito has this wonderful dense shade. The leaves are very much like the mango in that they don't let sunlight through and in only six or seven years from the sapling that we planted only a few feet tall, you now have an absolute giant that is providing a ton of shade for our house. And in fact, the way that we've planted it uh, is very much blocking the morning sun from hitting our patio. So it's a brilliant tree that will bring monkeys through to eat the caimitos. If we ever got some of the fruit, they're absolutely edible. It's kind of like a plum. But to be honest, it's one of those trees where usually you will see monkeys steal 100% or at least take a few bites out of every fruit before you get some. And like I said, it's wonderful for shade. For fruit trees, let's start off with one of the MVPs of our property, the star fruit or carambola, which I call an MVP because this tree produces several rounds of fruit per year. We do have to prune it and really take good care of it to get it to do that. But we've had fruit off this tree now for several years. It started producing when it was only seven or eight feet tall. You can keep it pretty short. It provides great shade as long as it's got some water during the dry season. And like I said, we get tons of fruit that the kids love. It's wonderful to make uh, juice out of, and it can also be a wonderful addition to all kinds of cocktails or yogurt, etc. Uh, so I highly recommend getting a carambola going. It's native, so it's gonna grow extremely fast, and as you can see, it produces a lot of fruit. One of the flavors of this area that you don't really get almost anywhere else on earth is that of the cas or the Costa Rica guava, which is this tree behind me here. Uh, this tree has produced a few guavas for us. We actually have it sort of in a bad position where the bananas and cuadrados that we have planted sort of shaded out. I think very soon it will be producing 
uh, it gives this small Costa Rica guava that's absolutely brilliant in a smoothie. It's a flavor that a lot of people might not like. Uh, guavas in general can be sort of in that funky range that doesn't really appeal to a lot of people's palates. But for me, the Costa Rica guava is special and really one of those flavors that I always love to get out at a restaurant. If you're out and they offer you a Cas Fresco, you can try the fruit that comes off this tree. Way up above me, with leaves up above the roof line of our house, is a tree you won't see too many people planting. It's called an Ojoche or Ramon nut. If our tree is female, it will produce this incredibly nutritious, wonderful nut someday that's one of the foods that can get you through uh, really difficult times because it has every amino acid and it's one of those super foods that people would pay a million dollars for if it were on a Whole Foods supermarket shelf in the US or Canada. If the tree happens to be male, it will be almost utterly worthless to us, aside from the fact that the Ojoche, O-J-O-C-H-E, or Ramon nut, is absolutely an evergreen tree that can stay green year round. We've planted this one extremely close to our house. Like all of the trees here, it's under a decade old, it's already up above what would be a second story roof line because we have a very steep pitched roof and we've planted it there so that we'll always have good shade right here. Someday the Ojoche will be an absolute giant. It can live to be centuries old. Our plan is that it'll long outlive us. But anyhow, it's one tree that we think if you've got some space for and, looking, and you're looking for some shade as a native species, and especially one that is an important food source, it's definitely worth looking into. Obviously, a lot of people think of citrus trees when they dream of moving to the tropics. We have a few planted here on the property. One over there is what's called a limon mandarino, or mandarin lemon. That little lemon is a small, orangish sort of hybrid or, you know, a variety that tastes a little bit like an orange and a little bit like a lime. Here we have an orange tree. I believe the variety is Valencia oranges. We also have on the other side of the property a limon criollo or basically a lime tree that gives these small, uh, it's a native species, little limes that are wonderful for lemonade. One thing with citrus, they do take a very long time to grow. We've been fortunate enough to fertilize our trees over the years with all kinds of fertilizer from our chickens and our ducks and our goats. You do need to plan years and years in advance to get these things going. I would highly recommend if you want to do a few citrus trees on the pro property that you invest initially in getting the larger saplings. You know, Anne-Marie and I bought some of our citrus trees, including this one as very small, cheap, you know, sort of five to $10 saplings. It would have been well worth the investment to pay a hundred bucks to get one of those larger ones that's more established. Uh, you can find them, you know, four or five feet tall at some of the better nurseries and absolutely it would have been worth it to save several years. This is the first time we've been able to get oranges uh, from our tree. It's 2022 and I'm sure that we planted this tree somewhere around 2013 or 14. So it took us eight or nine years at least to get our first oranges. Behind me is our tamarindo or tamarind tree. The tree produces a seed pod with maybe one to four seeds in it. That pod is filled with this delicious flavored pulp sort of that coats the seeds. And so if you're eating them fresh, you just break open the shell, pull out the seeds and sort of suck off the good tasting pulp. Uh, you can actually roast the seeds, but you really wouldn't see people in Guanacaste doing that to eat them. Most often they would take the insides of those pods, soak it for a long time, and then you can 
squeeze off the flesh into the water and sort of make a drink out of that. You do find it locally available as, you know, a fresco at sodas or small restaurants that you can get with your casado. So this is our tamarind tree. It's another one that takes a good number of years to start producing. I think this one is nearing a decade old. We are just now seeing the first few seed pods and we have had to take, again, great care of it by fertilizing, pruning and helping it over the years. Is it a tree? Is it just a plant? Does it really matter? The bananas here that you can grow in Costa Rica are an amazing part of life. There are thousands of varieties. They come in every shape, size, and flavor. You have bananas with seeds in them. You've got big ones, little ones. You have starchy bananas. This variety called cuadrados here that can even be good for mashed potatoes. Another part of Owning property here can be experimenting with different kinds of plants. Growing bananas over the years is a very fun part of living here. As always, thanks for watching and do be sure to subscribe. Have a good one.